Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Dreaming Tree Presents. So tonight's a little bit of a different format. We're not taking on any um, one album or one show. Um, we are going to be discussing the announcement that Boyd Tinsley made um, yesterday evening that he is taking off from touring this summer with the band. Um, you know, it was like a really devastating and shocking thing to hear and really surprising. I don't think anyone expected it. Um, I think he'd been talking about touring with the band and being excited about 2018, yada yada. So, you know, definitely unexpected, but we don't have anything negative to say. We wish him nothing but the best. We're, you know, definitely disappointed. Um, and we're here to kind of talk about the music and what is going to be different without him. But of course, we also have a wine. Yeah, so we have a wine tonight. We're also going to dis discuss a few highlights from Boyd's career and as well as some possible replacements for him this summer yeah. to accompany the band. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. We have a wine hailing from Alsace, France, and that is a Gewürztraminer. Um, quite a mouthful, but anyway, we are new to this wine. We just had it last night at a wine tasting class, but really liked it. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, so yeah, we went to this class last night. We kind of got exposed to a bunch of new varieties. Um, so we'll definitely be featuring some of those on the show. And this is just one of many. Um, so this one in particular is from the region in France that borders Germany, Alsace. Um, the Pinot Gris we did was from there as well. Yeah. Um, so great region for wines, obviously. Um, this is, this wine's made in Germany as well as this region in France, obviously just borders. Um, also, we, you can tell, we learned last night that many of them come in the long neck bottle shape, similar to a lot of Rieslings, um, just in general, German wines, it's kind of their style. Hmm. What year is this from? So this is a 2014, uh, so this should be definitely yeah, so uh, ready to, that might, that, yeah, that might, might contribute to the amber color. Yeah. Because so, these wines usually do not age at all. They are ready to go. But this is a little little older one. Yeah. Um, a few years old, but we'll see how it we'll, we'll see how it goes. So the, yeah, initially right off the bat, the color you can tell is very strong. So right off the back from the nose, I'm getting a lot of mango, mm -hmm. a lot of honey, honey, kind of definitely that sweet. Yeah, very sweet. So this variety of wine can range anywhere from um, um, off dry to semi-sweet. The one we had last night was an off dry, very pleasant. So it's, we are very much dry wine um, drinkers. So it turned us on yeah. it. So we'll see. I mean, it, yeah, they all have a is. very sweet nose. We'll see how this one tastes. Yeah. So you kind of get the sweetness. It hits you. The, the residual sugars are right there in the front. Uh, but then as it goes down, it doesn't linger, which I think is a big thing with sweet wines. If they're too sweet, um, dessert wines, the sweetness can linger a little bit too much if they're not made yeah. well. Um, but this is good. Yeah, um, I'm getting a sweet. lot of tangerine um, from the taste. Yeah. You get that? Yeah. Um, I also do get that spiciness as well. I feel it on my tongue. Yeah, a little bit of a spice. Not as much as the Pinot Gris, but a little bit of spice. Um, it's pretty light bodied. Yeah. Um, well, definitely compare. I mean, compared, compared, compared to like a Sauvignon Blanc or something, it's a well, little, it's a it's, little thicker. Yeah. So light, a little more body light than your to typical, medium. Yeah. Body. Than your, than yeah. your, than your light white wine. Um, but yeah, overall, it's like good. it's, 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 it's nice. It's kind of got that hint of like a dry Riesling, but a little more mangoey, a little more tangerine-y. Um, but still not overly sweet, like a Moscato or anything, obviously. But so it's a nice kind of balance in between there. Yeah. I like it. Good, good wine. Um, all right, so let's kind of get into it. We each kind of had our picks tonight. Um, so my first pick right off the bat 
was the minute I heard that Boyd wasn't going to be on tour, I thought back to the first Dave concert that we went to, which was Jiffy Lube, um, May 23rd, 2015, um, which was an amazing show. We could do a whole episode just on that show. Um, but I just like immediately thought back to being in the pit and seeing them live for the first time and being so close to Boyd when he like walked up to the corner of the stage and was doing his like all of his violin jams um and what stood out to me was his jam on crush um and i just like yeah. i feel like i can just like remember that and it's just such a great memory that i have so um that's kind of why i picked that crush um it's just a great crush in general they kind of yeah started off with you know i mean it was a revolutionary song in general i think i mean it was one of the first Dave songs that I downloaded from iTunes from Before These Kind of Streets, the studio version of Crush, um, incredible. It just combines so many different genres, jazz, jazz, a little bit of bluegrass, obviously alternative rock. Yeah. It was just, Crush is really a revolutionary song in so many ways. And it's so. just really gonna miss, you know, the violin sound. Yeah, yeah, um, On the jam, you know, they, in general, they jam really hard on Crush and everyone kind of gets their own little few minutes to jam it goes you know each instrument is really like highlighted which is what makes the jam really exciting yeah. um so it's definitely gonna miss uh the violin on that yeah um my next pick was um ants um from live, live tracks, tracks 37 37 1992 which was in charlottesville at the legendary tracks um, and this is a really, really cool ant. If you haven't listened to it, I highly recommend. It's so unique. Um, they, they play it through just normal, uh, basically. Yeah. It just sounds like your typical ant. And then at the very end, the song just kind of ends, and then Boyd picks back up and plays this really, really cool, fun, light, um, like country, bluegrass, yeah. like swing dance. Yeah, but it has that kind of colonial feel. Yeah, it's literally, it literally reminds me of just like a, like a, like a, um, just like a, a not a waltz, but like a Square partner. Dance yeah, or like something. a partner, like swing dance that you, yeah. you just have, like, it just sounds so cool. So if you haven't listened to it, you really have to. And, um, it's just a very unique, I mean, Boyd does play like bluegrassy sounds. Obviously, he's playing a fiddle, so that's his sounds. But this one is just so, like, lighthearted and, so different sounding than like any of his jams. Yeah, well, and and also too, it was 90, 1992. Um, they were at Tracks Nightclub, where basically they had a weekly residency there for a few years, and basically they had so much freedom. They had so much kind of licensed, creative license, if you will, to just kind of do whatever they want. So basically, they had so much time, and this is what I love about. Um, listening to old concerts from bands because they just they took their time they didn't rush through yeah. things they really just took their time to just express themselves and that's what music is about that's what wine is about that's what music is about that's what life is about um, taking time to express yourself and to be creative that's what it's about yeah so that's one of the reasons why we love this concert um, there's also another song that we love from this concert as well yeah so Matt actually pointed out he was like oh um, from the same album like Boyd starts off singing Angel from Montgomery, and I yeah. didn't even like realize that that was him. Um, so he, yeah, he does sing the first verse. Um, he does that a few different shows. It's not yeah. just thirty-seven, but I yeah, just didn't even realize awesome. that it was him. I mean, his voice is like very smooth sounding, very. I mean, it's lovely. So it's really yeah. cool. It's a cool um, touch. Yeah, um, yep. and then plus his violin fiddle on that is really, really good. Really yep. like great bluegrass on that. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. definitely a really good one. So we're just going to highlight two other um, songs that we love about Boyd. Um, obviously, there's tons more, so comment below. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, your favorite Boyd memories in the comment section below. But anyway, Lie in Our Graves, one of my favorite versions is Live Tracks Volume 2. Um, it's not the longest Lie in Our Graves out there. It's not the most intense, but it just works. It really highlights, it highlights Butch, it highlights Boyd. Uh, and it just works. It's high energy. It's um, a nice length, uh, maybe like, you know, 13, 15 minutes, not super long, not too short. And it just gets the job done. And it really kind of epitomizes his role in the band. Yeah. I which mean, is understated, but important. Yeah. Well, it's understated until you start listening to 
all of their songs thinking yeah. about thinking about so mm -hmm. obviously we get a lot of these songs dave and tim the acoustic whatever that's different when you start thinking about these songs full band yeah um so like, with all the instruments added pig a uh, song that jane likes tripping billies recently, just recently yeah. like so, so many anything, songs every single song like yeah. full band like hands down you listen to it and you take out Boyd and you're like, wow, what is this song about him? And I feel like in particular, Liner Graves and Two Step are just like, I yeah. mean, one of many, obviously, but those in particular yeah. are just so... They, he just affects them so yeah, much. Yeah. Anyway, but the Two Step that I really want to point out is the Two Step, um, the live tracks from St. Louis. I believe it's live tracks 16, I want to say. I don't know. It's 2008, it's the St. Louis one. It is an incredible Two Step. It just goes, the intro just goes on and on and on and on. It really highlights his importance to the two-step intro. But anyway, those are just some different highlights from Boyd. We're going to touch on right now some possible replacements, just a few um, possible replacements this summer for people that could fill in for him. And then that's it. Yeah, so obviously there's going to be a giant hole once he leaves. So they've got to have someone. Um... We obviously we would love to hear another violin string player yeah. be in that hole, um, but if not, at the very least we need Bella Fleck or someone on another string instrument to be filling in at a lot of these concerts. Butch needs to come in and pick up some of those holes as well. Yeah, we'll um, see. One of our favorite bands is Cabinet, and they have a few different string player, a few string banjo players that could fill in yeah. and kind of fill that we void. Would yeah, um, love to hear them pair up. Yeah, Railroad Earth is another amazing band with a great violin player. Um, Green Sky Bluegrass, there's a few other options out there. So anyway, hopefully, you know, one of these happens and we get more of a string presence. Yeah, I mean, we really are good. You're gonna need to fill the hole with something because it's just not gonna be the same. Yep. But anyway, thank you, Boyd, for 25 plus years of amazing songs, amazing set lists, amazing live music, um, and promoting those bluegrass sounds uh, with DMB and making DMB unique. And anyway, um, we wish you all the best and Hopefully DMB still kills it this summer on the road. See you, hashtag see you on the road. Anyway, support live music, support great wine, support wine from Alsace, France. Anyway, um, did I already say it already? Anyway, I'll say it again. Support live music, support great wine. Dreaming Tree, out.